Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, let's see, what is it? Thursday, September 23rd, my brother's birthday. Mike, many of you have spoken to him. Oh, I should have had him come on. And so he can say hello. It's his birthday today. Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. It's really good to be here with you guys today. We're going to have some fun. We are going to have some fun. If you are brand new to our community and you have the ability to say hello on the chat box, say hello. Let us know where you're from. We can give you some love. And um, if it's your first time here, but you've been in the community for a while, say hello. We'll give you some love as well. Um, great name. Great name. How are you guys doing? How is everyone all over the world? How are you guys feeling? Brand new. Hi, Vela. Nice to have you here. Um, my number 23, the reason I love 23, I'll give you guys a, a little personal story. So my dad's brother, my uncle, was a very special man. He was very unique and um, was a gift to so many of us. And he was born on October 23rd. His number was 23. My brother was born on, on September 23rd. And actually, my uncle passed away March of 23rd, 23, March 23rd, like 10 years ago. So 23 has always been, um, ever since he passed, 23 has always been uh, a number that really connects me to um, him, my uncle, but also to the universe and to who I am and why I incarnated and um, the kind of greater, the greater picture of, of what this human journey is all about. It, it keeps me connected to that, that higher perspective over and over and over again. So that's where that number came from. Um, that's your son's motocross number. I love it. Uh, hello, British Columbia. Glad to have you here, Gail. Hi, Monica from Germany. Brittany's feeling good. Hi, Luke. You're struggling, Andrea. Well, we've got a super chat today and we're going to get right into it. So before I get into the super chat and before I tell you guys what the super chat is, for those of you that don't know, a couple of housekeeping items. Number one, um, our next live is a Q&A and it's going to be on September 29th. So I think it's next Wednesday, September 29th. It's a Q&A and it's at 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time or Pacific Standard Time. I don't know when the time changes, but 10 a.m. California time. Let's see what else. The schedule for October is going to be out on September 25th. So look for the schedule for October. It will be out on the 25th of September. And what else? Next month is our two-year anniversary for Patreon. So I started this two years ago in October. So I'm going to do something special in that month, next month. I don't really know what it is, um, but I'm going to sit and figure out what, uh, what, what we can do um, in addition to what we already do every month in the Patreon community. And um, one last thing, a uh, quick message for all of us, whether you're listening to this live or on the replay. One of the things that really came through this morning when I was in meditation was the remembrance of allowing, especially right now, allowing your concerns to dissolve. So, and really calling on the angelic beings right now that came in really strong as well. These energetic beings, um, that we call angels, right? Allowing your concerns, your worries, your doubts, your fears, trying to figure out ways to let them go, drop them off at the at the uh, bus stop, right? Don't hold them. Doing your best to not hold on to those concerns, the worry, the fear, the doubt, the stress, the, the anxiety, all of that. 
Um, it's inevitable what we are going through and we can't control it. The only thing we can control is how we move through it, our state of consciousness, our state of awareness, which is choice. So having concerns, having doubts, having fears, having anxiety, that isn't necessarily going to assist us, right? But it is a natural go-to response. And sometimes it's very unconscious. So you're walking about your day and you're just feeling a lot of anxiety or worry, right? It doesn't feel like it's a choice. So really learning right now and going forward how to navigate this anxiety, the worry, the stress, the fear, whatever you may be experiencing quite frequently right now, if you're experiencing that, remember that it's consciousness, it's energy, and it's not designed to control you. And you always have a choice. So starting to really tap into internally, what are tools that I have within myself to assist me in moving through this? Because these concerns, these worries, these uh, fear-based sort of projections into the future, they are not helping you in any way, shape, or form. They're not assisting us at all. So paying attention, because it's a very programmed way of being. Um, we feel like we're in control when we have concern, right? We feel like we're in control when we worry. We feel like we have control when we start trying to fear or predict the future. It feels very safe for us, um, but it is a very exhaustive and um, time-consuming and energetic drain to be in those states. So just pay attention. That's all. Just pay attention. And I always like to see it as like, okay, if I'm feeling anxiety or if I'm feeling concern around something, if I'm feeling heaviness around something, I will allow it to move through me, but I will also um, em empower myself by choosing to sort of pick it up and set it aside, you know, put it uh, um, on, a, on a shelf or something. And the way I do that is I go outside in nature. Maybe I'll go to a yoga class. Maybe I'll go and have a conversation with somebody at the coffee shop. I don't, I'll try to do something that will get me out of the fixation of whatever it is that's putting me in that hamster wheel. Okay. Just a message that came through this morning. Take it or leave it. Okay. So super chat. I love the super chats. I want to get through as many people as possible. I always say that. So I'm going to try to once again, limit them to about 15 minutes per person. I will be choosing people randomly during this live. All you have to do is say, pick me, pick me, pick me, right? Or choose me or pull me up or I want to go on or whatever you want to say. If you've been on a super chat in the past year, please do not raise your hand. If you have had a mini session in the past year, please do not raise your hand. We have a lot of people in the community and we have a lot of people that have never been seen, that have never had um, the ability to ask questions. So again, if you've had a super chat or a mini session in the past year, please do not raise your hand. And this will allow more people to be able to get a chance to um, come on screen. You will be on screen with me side by side. Second thing is if you don't have any questions, maybe save it until you do. So don't raise your hand if you don't really have something to ask. Um, because there's a lot of people in the community that have a lot of questions. Okay. So again, if there's nothing really stirring within you, um, please try to hold back in raising your hand so that we can bring people on. Please pay attention to time and um, be cognizant of it. I will as well. But I would really like to keep each person down to about 15 minutes. Um, and so I would really appreciate as you come on screen that you're aware of it and I'm aware of it. Um, that way we can get as many people on and in as possible. Um, last thing is, please don't ask the question, what do my guides have for me? What, what do my guides want me to know? Um, do you have any messages from my guides? Okay. Um, I won't be kind of channeling that kind of stuff today. That's more of a mini session. So really, this is about the, the nitty gritty life experiences that we're all having all over the world and how to navigate this human journey right now and um, bringing yourself and your heart and your soul uh, to us. And we always learn, all of us learn each time somebody is um, comes up. Uh, so... Yeah, there you go. All right, so let's begin. I, I don't know how long I'm going to go. We'll just see. 
but um, let's just start playing. Let's see what wants to come through. So um, let's go. Okay, we're going to start with Donata. Hello. Hi. Oh my God. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm doing well today. How are you? I'm. Good. I was really quiet today and I felt exactly what you said. I felt like I was really tapping into something and I couldn't really tell what it was, but it, I was like full body, just sensations all day. And it got really quiet. It got really, really quiet internally and it hasn't been quiet um, of late. So yeah, I could, it makes sense that I'm here right now with you. I love it. I love when it gets um, when it gets really quiet and um, it's almost um, spooky because it's like, wait, what's going on? Right. Like, yes. okay, what, what what this isn't normal, um, but it actually is. It actually is normal. It's just that it's not it's not the normal that we've been experiencing as of late. It mm -hmm. feels more normal than anything else. It's interesting. I've been, I recently went through a really dark, dark, dark time, like the darkest time that I've ever experienced internally. Um, and it was triggered by something that um, was just me following my alignment, you know, and like listening to you for all these months and really resonating with what you were saying and really using that as my guiding light you know and coming back to that over and over again and i did i made a big decision um of in my relationship and it felt so in alignment so hard but so in alignment with myself but from there i expected it to just be like this amazing like you just unlock this door to heaven because you're following your resonance and instead it made me dive really deep into this abyss which i was not expecting at all and it was so uncomfortable, but it was so what I needed to go through. And I knew that, right? And it just felt like something died, you know, like something inside of me died and needed to die. And since then, nothing really makes sense anymore, which is so like, it's, it felt like I was dulled, you know, it felt mm -hmm. like my shine went really dull. And at the same time, it feels like I have more peace because I feel so much more grounded in who I really am versus the attachments that I had to the external because those attachments were keeping me in prison. And now I just feel like all I have is me and it feels really lonely. It feels mm -hmm. really quiet it feels really lonely. And I think when I have these moments like today, it's me just tapping back into that feeling of there really isn't much, but that quiet sensation. Mm -hmm. So for me right now, I think what I am dealing with is just a feeling of now what, you know, it's, I, it almost feels like I'm stuck in the wrong timeline. Mm -hmm. It feels like I'm already so past the mm. stage and yet I'm still here having to do that and I'm a mom and I have to do the day-to-day -day things and a part of me just feels like I have already energetically um, moved on to something else but I'm still trapped in this old existence and I feel very that's the that that's where I feel the most restless is just just wanting things to already be somewhere else and they're not, you know? Mm. Girl, you just like nailed it. I'm like, yep, 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 yep. That was, um, yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I resonate with so much of what you said, um, especially the piece about kind of being in a timeline that that isn't, 
that is, um, it's almost like, wait, why am I still here? Why am I still in this um, timeline? And I'll tell you one of the things that comes up for me a lot, because I want you to visualize that in the quantum field, everything's stacked on top of each other. It's not linear, right? So it's really weird and kind of freaky when you start to tap into the quantum space, which is what you're doing. So what that means is you're acutely aware of sort of your beingness, your frequency, what resonates, what feels right, what doesn't feel right. It's it's coming online even more. And when you do that, it also becomes acutely apparent the, uh, I don't like to call it lower, but the frequencies or the ways of being that are just no longer a part of your reality. It's like a dimmed down version of experiencing humanity. And so because we have to stand in all of it, the quantum space, it can feel as if you are in that wrong timeline. But what's actually happening is you are become, you're, you're like multi, you're quantum jumping almost, right? Like um, you're moving in between these different experiences or these different timelines, these different ways of experiencing the world. And so probably for you, there are probably some days where it's more heightened, right? This old version of being is more heightened. It's like, I can't do it. I can't see it. I can't hear it. I can't. And there's probably other days where you're like, eh, it's okay. You know, I can do, I can handle it, right? It, it, it gets, it, that's, that's moving in up and down between these, these different sort of quantum spaces, right? So it's like, so you're not, you're, you're evolving, you're shifting, you're, you're, your that that dullness that you're feeling i resonate as well because what happens is that when we start to come inward and we start to detach energetically from the the things that have imagine attachments as like um like lights that go out from your body and attach to things and then it turns on and you're like oh my god i'm so excited oh my god this is so fun oh my god this is so great oh my god i can't wait to Oh, I lost you. I can't wait to go to this party or I can't wait to like all these things. They light you up because there's an attachment to it. Right. And all of a sudden, when you start to detach from the external world, those lights turn off and you're still connected. I had this conversation yesterday with Kyle Cease. I was on his he has like a community like this and he had me on and we were talking about attachment versus connection. So you're still connected to the world, yes. right? You're still energetically connecting to people and whatever, but it's not turning you on anymore. There's no lights. It's like, wait, what happened? What, 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 what's going on? There's, there's a dullness that starts to happen um, because you are literally pulling all your energy back here. And then when you do that, when you pull it all back here, hi. Hi. Hello, beautiful. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Kumi. It's Kumi. Kumi. What a beautiful name. How are you? Lori, remember we listen to Lori sometimes. You're mm -hmm. so fresh. How old are you? Let me guess. Don't tell me. I'm going to guess. You are three? Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay! I was good. I'm good. What are you doing? Were you taking a nap? Were you taking a nap? Were mm you -mm. playing with stickers? Yeah. You want to go play with stickers and Dada? You want to? No. You want, no. To, listen? You want to listen to Lori? You want to hang with us? You want to hang out with us? You want to close the door? Let's close the door. Come. Um, yeah. So cute. But yeah, that's the difference. But so, so everything you're saying is like, yep, it's just part of the, it's part of, it's part of what we're going through. It's, yeah. it's what you're, it's what you're going to experience. And there's no, there's no way around it. You know, it's just, um, 
it's right it's right on target though it's exactly what i've been experiencing lately as well um and a part of what comes with that too with the um the, that restlessness that i that i feel is the feeling of i have so much to share and i have so much to Mama. i have so much to give and i feel Mama, like can even, I soda yes go get this can you have a little bit um and there's a feeling of I'm not doing enough. There's a feeling of, you know, with with what I've gained now and how I've been able to that's just a deep feeling that I've had for a while now. And am I doing enough? You know? And am I how much of this is me staying in my comfort zone too? And how much more do I have to give and, and, and accelerate the jumping of the timelines by doing more, you know? Yeah. So it's a fine line because you always want to stay in your resonance, which requires a huge amount of patience. And what that means is that <clears throat> that feeling of wanting to do more, not doing enough, that is that's innate in all of us i think and in all of us that are awakening really awakening right now right there's this urgency or this need to really kind of get to work or, or you know there's more to this this is why i'm here there's more to this where's my impact how am i making the impact and so you have to remember that everything is energetic which sucks because it can take a while to sort of integrate into the urge or the push or the knowingness of what's next. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you, you, it's, you, you have to, you have to balance both the urge to kind of keep searching or keep looking or keep holding that knowingness of something is I'm here for more. There's something else, mm -hmm. but the surrendering of there's nothing I'm, I'm here. I, there's nothing to do at this moment. Now there's nothing right now. Right. So you're surrendering and you're, you're trying yeah. to be as present as possible with it while you also hold the knowingness that, so you, you, you stay open. You stay open to when, when, when will it drop or when will I know? When is it, when is it time? That kind of a feeling, but you, you also have to let that go. You know, you have to like surrender to. Okay. Um, yeah. So you have to, you have to balance both of those. So yeah. there is something, otherwise you wouldn't be feeling it, but you don't know what it is and you don't ever yeah. force something or push something. Yeah. So stay open. Like the container is open, the, 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 it's open. And at the same time, you're in a linear time space continuum where things don't necessarily in, uh, manifest instantaneously. So then you have to wait for the resonance or the energetic pulse. That's like, yeah. Oh, this is it. <gasps> okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what that's what we're doing right now. You know, you know what I've been experiencing, though, and this is like, this is the restlessness that comes to is like, I do this, but to an extreme. So I'm constantly whenever something happens, I'm like, is this it? And I feel yeah. that constantly, you know, like the constant, like peeking behind the door and trying to make it be that thing, or is it that thing? Or is it that thing? And and to tell you the truth, I've been cursing at my guides. Like, what are you? Have you forgotten at me? Have mm -hmm. you forgotten about me? Have you forgotten that I'm here? It feels almost like I've been forgotten. Mm -hmm. And when I was in that dark, dark time, it was a lot that came up was I was a mistake. I'm not like, this is the wrong timeline. This is the wrong time. I'm not supposed to be here right now. Oh, wow. It's got goosebumps. I mean, so that's a deeper, a, a much deeper um, awareness that you may be having that could be very real. 
So mm. that's a deeper sort of cellular memory. Mm. So it could either be from a past life, right? Or it could be from the, when you did incarnate, when you did come in, there could have been some sort of miscommunication. There could have been something that was like off in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not feeling that though. What I, I'm feeling like it could be a, a cellular memory from another lifetime that you've had, mm. uh, where you were lost, you were forgotten, you were um, you were left to kind of fend for yourself, mm. right? So when you started activating, when you started doing whatever it was that you incarnated to do in that lifetime, what what could have happened is that you felt like you, maybe you were persecuted, maybe mm. something like that happened. And you were like, wait a second, what, why is this happening to me? Right? So when we start getting activated again, when we start turning on, when we start to say, uh oh, the engine's going, okay, it's things are going to start to rev up. Unconsciously, there's cellular memories of the last time that may have happened and what may have unconsciously occurred when that did, when the engines did start to rev up. And you're like, oh my God, unconsciously, is that going to happen again? Can I trust my guides? Can I trust that I'm going to do the wow. right, do it the right way this time? Right? Because you probably thought in that lifetime, if this is what I'm supposed to be doing, why would it end in this abrupt kind of dark mm. or uh, catastrophic way? Mm. Right? And so it feels like there's a cell, there's cellular memories of that time because you're turning on, the engines are revving, and the last time the engines revved in a physical body, it didn't turn out good. Okay, you you felt left. Why would why would guides ever let you be persecuted in whatever way that that you may have been? Why, right? Why? So it makes sense. So, but this is a this is the wow. life. This is the lifetime where we are here to not be physically persecuted. We will absolutely be energetically and verbally persecuted, right? I mean, that we're seeing that over and over and over again, but we will not be physically persecuted in this lifetime. So we are very safe to start to speak. We're very safe to start to allow ourselves to be who we came here to be. You're very guided. You're, you're very awake, alert, attuned to everything. And so you're also attuned to the cellular memories of the last time the engine started revving up. So what I'm getting, um, what I'm visualizing right now is like, um, can, can she sit with her? Can she sit with us and sort of journal or kind of write it out, like get it out on paper even if it's like five minutes before you go to bed when everyone else is asleep, just five minutes at night where you can That's just my time. Yeah. yeah. What's going on? What's happening? What do I need to know? Don't think about like who's speaking to me. Am I doing just just start to get things kind of clear, just clear this clear things up because um, it's it's foggy right now because you're yeah. you're you're mixing two different lifetimes. Yeah. You're mixing two different lifetimes because you've never been alone. You weren't alone in that lifetime either, but you've never been alone. You're not alone right now, right? And you're being primed. And so they need you and your higher self needs you to, uh, to, to trust. So the more that you can sort of get it out, just all the guck that's in the head, um, the clearer you'll be in, in, in what's, arising and where you're going what's what's happening here it feels like you have a voice like there's some there's something around your voice um and like art artist a creative creativity in some way i don't know what that is whether it's speaking or i don't know there's something but um it has to do with your voice and um and starting to get familiar with your voice. I mean, this happens with me even to this day. And I've been doing this for a couple of years now, four or five years. Mm -hmm. I'm always being fine-tuned. Mm -hmm. Meaning, oh, I'm now going to start talking in this way. Or I'm now going to start presenting in this way. Or I'm now going to let go of, like, there's always fine-tuning that happens with the way that we are here to, to be, right? So 
you're 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 just beginning the 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 process of understanding who you are. You're just beginning the process of understanding your voice. You're just beginning the process of stepping into who you came here to be. You just you're just beginning. So you have to realize that you are being guided by higher self, that nothing is a mistake, um, that you surrender to all of it, everything you're feeling and experiencing. And the more you can journal it out or, or walk it, like whatever helps you sort of get it out, the more you're going to have an understanding of how this all is going to unfold for you. Because it's constant, it's going to be a constant fine tuning over and over and over again. And at the same time, um, you're not going to know what's going on. You're just going to be like, I have no idea what's happening over and over and over again. And so it's, it's this, it's this balance of, or this training that where you are learning how to not have any answers and still hold confidence and trust and surrender and sovereignty in the not knowing anything because it always drops in. It's a beingness. So you're learning how to kind of be you without knowing how. It's really challenging. You just start, you have to start to be, that's the energy of it without knowing how you're going to be. It's weird, but that's how, that's how it kind of works. Um, you can't figure it out. You can't, you can't figure it out. It's, you just have to start to be it. That's the best way I could describe it. <laughs> Which gives you. That absolute- sums it up. No, but that totally sums it. That's what it's been. And that's why yeah. it's been so strange. I'm like, I just need more. I even went and did an ayahuasca journey and I got nothing. All I you got was come that. back into, it yeah. was all like, go back into your body. Yeah. Just like, we have nothing for you. Just yeah. come back. It's all here. It's yeah. all there. You're wasting you're, your time. You're too potent. You're too energetic. You're too clear. You're too clean. Ayahuasca is really, in my opinion, ayahuasca is more uh, uh, for people that are trying to still kind of um, clean or clear out trauma in the body. It really helps mm-hmm. do that. I, mm-hmm. That For me, that feels like what it's really designed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're done that, that you're not, you know, listen, there's always going to be stuff coming up, but, um, yeah, you're very, you've got everything in, in, in you now. So there's nothing that you need to, uh, do or train yeah. for. And it's really just a beingness and coming back in and being okay with the numbness and the dullness and the, you know, the, the, the monotony of life and all the things that's like, oh my God, is this really what, what's happening here? Um, <laughs> it's just like because it's going to shift, but it's just the phase yeah. a lot of us are in. It's the phase that we're we're that we're yeah. experiencing ourselves in. It's like we're it's like this. This is the image they just gave me. It's <laughs> it's like we're all soldiers that have never actually been in battle before, right? We've been civilians, and yeah. so we're 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 kind of in this big building, and we're all putting on our nice shiny armor, and we're like, "What do you do with a sword? What do you do with this?" <laughs> What, what's it going to look like out there? How do we walk? How do we, what, what happens if somebody comes at, like, we have no idea what we're, we're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're like, yeah. you're looking to somebody else like, Hey, do you know what's going on? I have no idea. Do you know what's going on? No idea. Like there's no playbook, none, but it's what you came in to do. And yet you don't know what it is. And you can't, you, the more you try to grab it, the more you try to figure it out, the more you're going to yes. be in suffering and struggle. Yes. It's like you're building the staircase as you're walking, you know, like you're, it's yeah, 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 yeah. It's really the more for me personally, in my experience of this, every day is, is, is literally a day of practicing being, and there's always new stuff arising for me. And it's for me, it is, um, it's like I'm in this space of absolute surrender to higher self. Like I just yeah. know that whatever is arising today is perfect. I don't have to force anything. And the more that I can be with me as I'm doing every human experience, the more I will be integrating and accelerating and evolving and expanding into who I came to be. So you have to just know that's how it works. Yeah, Instead of trying to figure the, it out. The trust piece is huge, you know, like the trust yeah. piece that you mentioned is huge because I feel like I have been trusting. And honestly, the more I've 
just the more I follow my resonance, the more, the less abundant I've been. That like there's they're letting go of a lot of things that this earthly experience, the forcing and the just doing what this world has taught you to do. You know, it's it looks it's weird because my mm -hmm. life doesn't look as abundant and 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 as glitzy as it did when I was just unaware. And so it's hard to feel like, is this is this real? Like, am I really supposed to follow my residence? Because why is the outcome not looking the way, you know, why is this not looking more shiny yeah. and more spectacular when really I know that that's not the point, you know? But it's hard. Like, there are moments of doubt of like, am I just like losing my mind? Yes. Saying no to this job, saying no to these opportunities because they're not in alignment. Like, who am, you know? I, I know exactly what you mean. I, I will give you. I will give you another example of my of how what I'm what I've been experiencing. I it, I have been feeling more and more like I don't want to say um, a hermit, but it's like um, the 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 sparkly things. They don't. They're they're not. Um, they're not important anymore. They're not they're, they're, they're being taken away. Um, financial, the way that I experience finances and money is really strange. It's almost like it's dissolving. It's, it's a very strange feeling, but it's like, um, it's, how do I explain it? Um, it's like, they're trying to prepare me to not live from it, which is, I don't have family. I don't have friends. I mean, um, kids. Okay. So I live in a very different world than you live in. So I, it's just me. I have to worry about, and I understand that, but it's almost like they don't, they want me to live. Okay. You know how we live in terms of money. We live in terms of paychecks. We live in terms of paying our bills, right? They're trying to get me to not live from that state, but that's easy because I bring in money every month. So of course I can sit in that, but it's possible that that's what they're sort of getting you to get used to. Now I will state this. None of us are here to be in lack. None yeah. of us came yeah. here to be in lack. That is an yeah. absolute. We are, we are designed to be abundant. We are designed to not fall into the trap of lack and, and um, necessity. Instead, uh, we are here to be in abundance. We are here to have what we need always. When we start following resonance, it, it's pulling us out of the matrix and it's asking us to trust in a system that hasn't been solidified yet. So you're like, well, how do I know I'm safe? Right. And you're like, I'm just going to go back to the old job because at least I know. And then you're like, no, I absolutely cannot. That's not resonating. There's no freaking way. Right. But how do I know that where I am, I'm going to be taken care of? Why are my guides not giving me the job right now? Why is it like, why is it, why does it feel like I'm struggling? Why does this feel like I'm suffering? Why does it feel so challenging? Why can't it be easy? Yeah. Why am I being punished for doing the right thing? Yeah. You know, like that. Feels yeah. like there's a punishment. So yeah. there's this, um, so imagine that here's another vision image they're giving. Imagine that we are in this third dimensional matrix sphere right here. Okay. And this is a good, this is a good analogy or good vision. And then, then the, we have this other kind of system that we're starting to step into. And this is the system where we are, the majority of humanity is, is doing what, what lights them up. And money is sort of on the back burner. I don't know how, what it looks like, but it's, but humanity is actually doing what they, what sparks, what lights them up. We're all being taken care of, blah, 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 whatever this looks like. Right. And so what's happening and, and you're living from resonance here, you live from ego and fear and logic. Right. And so what's happening is that we're starting to split out and sort of move into this we're in like a funnel or like a tunnel and it's dark and it's like, oh, excuse me, I'm all alone. Excuse me. How does this work? Excuse me. Like what's going on here? And we're, 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 we're squeezing ourselves into this new way of being. And because most of humanity hasn't stepped into it yet, and we're the first ones kind of moving into it, it's very crunchy. It's very uncomfortable. 
Um, and there's nothing wrong with kind of going back and being like, screw it, I'm just going to get this job so that I can feed my children. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that that takes a lot of courage. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of compassion. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So we want to we want to recognize that doing things that may not be of the highest resonance in order to sort of function in the world right now can be some of the courageous, compa most com compassionate things we can do for ourselves. So it's not, there's not a right way in doing yeah. that, you know, yeah. but, but when we do follow resonance, resonance doesn't care about bills. Resonance doesn't care about taxes. Resonance doesn't care about the matrix. So you're like, oh, shoot, I'm going to start following resonance. And now I'm going to be pulled out of all the laws and rules. Like I'm going to be pulled out of all of that. Right. But when we start trusting deep, deeply in that resonance, yeah. we start to pop out. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, my God, here's this job. Oh, my God, here's this. Oh, my God, here's that. And things start to pop. Things start to arise for us. Things start to be shown to us. It's just that every human experience is different and every human experience uh, is going to have different ways of experience all of this, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's really no right or wrong way to do it. There's no laws. There's no rules. There's no playbook. Um, but, you know, we, you got to do it. What you don't want to put yourself in more stress and anxiety in following resonance, but you also want to follow resonance. So it's just, a, it's a tough space. It's a really tough space to be in because it's a dance for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a, yeah. yeah. It's a dance because this is, this is, um, it's almost like, okay, what areas of your life can you follow resonance in? And what areas of your life are you like, I can't follow resonance in that one yet. <laughs> that yes, kind of like there may be an absolute yeah. resonance of like I do not want to be around these people ever again, resonance mm -hmm. wise. But that's not possible right now, right? So for whatever reason, you're living with them, or you have to see them on a regular basis. But the resonance is, I'm not resonating with them. I can't have conversation with them, right? So then you have to learn how to navigate resonance with the inability to escape. The world that you're in and and so you you figure out how best to to navigate and move through it same with jobs you know if you're in a job that you don't resonate with or don't like but it's paying the bills great figure out a way to to navigate that with compassion for yourself yeah, yeah you know yeah, for sure. um for sure thank yeah. you so much yeah you're welcome great conversation yeah thank you. thank you thank you and thank you for for i mean everything 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 you're the north star in so many ways i mean i keep coming back to just remembering to remembering all these things by listening to you so thank you and thank you for this community you're welcome thanks for being here bye bye, Say bye. Say bye. bye. see you later alligator <laughs> so cute here do you need to x out or are oh, we doing you. it Okay. okay. Thank you. Bye-bye, Mama. Bye. Bye. <laughs> cute. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, who's next? Yeah, a line, a resonance is like alignment because um, um, it's your, it's your, like she was saying, your North Star, you know? It's, um, It's challenging. And resonance always requires a huge amount of, um, it requires a huge amount of um, patience. Lots of patience. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's do um, Cass. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi, I sure Hi. can. Hello. Hi. I've been very eager to chat with you for a while, so I'm glad that uh, that it worked out. Yay. 
So um, most of my questions are about manifestation versus fate. Um, I have been wanting something on the career front for a very long time. um, And I've really tried to get in a space of abundance and raising my frequency to be a match to that. And it's been a very long journey with not a lot of fruition. Um, So it just got me thinking, you know, is this something in an Akashic record where it's something that I am not meant to actualize or see? Um, It's tough because my intuition is saying, like, just stick with it, just stick with it, just stick with it. But that's been for a very long time now. So it's been um, kind of difficult. I guess it's sort of piggybacking off of what you were just saying a minute ago um, with, was it Donata, I think? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love this. So manifestation has been coming up loud the last 24 hours, like in my field, manifestation, manifestation, intention. It actually came up last night when I was talking with Kyle and his community. So before I start, I'm I'm just tapping into your energy field so I can get a little bit clearer on your specific situation. Okay, so I'm just going to start. Here's how I want you to see manifestation. And you can take this or leave this. If it's like, no, Lori, this is not resonating. That's great. But here's how I want you to visualize manifestation from the quantum space, from the quantum field. Okay, so your physical body is standing where you're standing. It's got a frequency. And it has in this frequency right here that it, it, it has this desire to pull in a version of you that exists, that you've, that you've probably seen, you've, you're doing this, you can feel it, you know it, okay? It's an absolute for you probably, right? It's like, no, this is supposed to happen. I know this is supposed to happen. And I want you to see that version of you some other time, some other age, let's just call it a different timeline, okay? Now, where you are right now, there are also alternate versions of you doing other things in other timelines, okay? When we, and there's an intuitiveness to that version of you, absolutely, okay? You might not like this next part, but here it comes, okay? When we hold tight to what is so deeply in us, burning, right, yearning, like an an absolute, there is a fixation or an attachment to it that is so strong that it stunts it stunts you or slows you down from experiencing the quantum field. So I want you to imagine there's seven castes, right? All over the place, eight, 10, 15, but you're focused only on one because that's the one you want. Duh. Like I'm in a physical reality. This is the one I want. This is the one that most resonates. And so when we are in the quantum field, which you're in and you're fixated only on one version of you, which makes sense. We've all done it. We all do it. I do it with my partner. I'm like, oh no, no, this is my partner, my partner, my partner, my partner, my partner is like fixation, right? then what happens is, is that you are trying to dictate the way the quantum field works. You're trying to dictate you, ego, logic, physical, human is trying to dictate how you're going to navigate this quantum field with all these other versions. You're trying to control it, which makes sense. But here's what we don't understand about the quantum field and manifestation. We do not know what is for our highest good. We think we do. And What happens when we stay fixated is that your higher self may be trying to pull you to something else. It may be trying to pull you to that, okay? It could be pulling you to that. But if you stay fixated on it, then the ego and the logic and the suffering and the struggle is going to be the aspect of you that is navigating you to it. And you, you will never be able to get to it from that frequency. Okay. From the frequency of I'm trying to get somewhere, I'm manifesting something, I, that's ego. That is kind of lower self 
wanting something and trying to trick or navigate the quantum field. Higher self you wants you to let it all go. Higher self literally wants you to watch it dissolve. That's not the first time I'm hearing that. And my husband, who is not necessarily what I consider, um, you know, what probably most people in this group would consider to be awake, but he's open to the idea. You know, he sees me do a lot of things in the community and my crystals and my meditations and all of these things. So um, he has an open mind. He just personally is not there yet. And he has just said, you know, you're doing good work. You got to stick with it, but you're gripping too tight. You have to let it go. You have to let it go. You need to understand, and this is for everyone in manifestation. And this is this also has to do with patience. If we let go of the reins of the horse and we just let the horse take us, the horse being the higher self, okay? At, or your human journey, both. And we know that the horse knows exactly, exactly, exactly what I need for my highest potential. And we and we live in that space. So something you can practice is starting to tap into my higher self. This aspect of me that I don't even know really exists, but everyone says exists. So it's got to exist. And I'm, you know, it exists. That aspect of me is going to move me to the highest potential for me. And I don't need to worry about it. And I actually don't even need to manifest it. So my question, my follow-up question to that would be, it sort of seems like with the position that I'm in, it's either really try to do a lot to make it happen and show up and be the best version and do the work, or just say, no, I'm not going to do any of that and I'm going to let it happen. But that means not showing up and not throwing my hat into the ring. So I don't really know where the middle ground is. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, that's a great question. And and I get that a lot, especially in comments and in my posts sometimes. It's like, well, what are we supposed to do? Just not do anything? Just get throw up our hands, right? (laughs) No, you are, you have to do, right? You, You have to, even moving towards that position that you want, that job, that, that, that way of being, right? That's fine. You hold that in the quantum field that exists, mm-hmm. that, that exists in the quantum field. Okay. So what you want to do is if, if what you're doing right now is not of your, of, is not feeding your soul to its highest, it's not what you absolutely want, right? Then the way you play in the quantum field is you, you tap into your higher self. you got to tap into your higher self because your higher self is like, girl, I've got you. You're like, okay, listen, I'm ready. I'm ready. I know I've been ready for a while and I've been telling you like, this is where we're going, but I'm going to let that go. I'm ready to open myself up for you to show me what is next. Now you keep doing what you're doing. You keep doing whatever it is that you're doing, but you open yourself up. You open, you, you are literally energetically walking around super excited knowing that you are going to be shown and guided to what is next for your highest potential, right? And if you want to be a part of that in terms of manifestation, then the key is, is that anything that you are desiring, anything that you are manifesting, you dissolve at the exact same time. Okay. So when you go into manifestation practices, you see that version of you, And then you absolutely have to dissolve it. So you have to watch it dissolve. I've been trying to, as I take steps, like picture an old school mailbox where you like enter a mail-in contest, you know, and you just stick it in an envelope and you send it off and like, maybe it's this one, maybe it's the next one. And you just, you know, you kind of got to wait until you get chosen to win the contest or whatever, just sort of, you know, that old school thing. And in and, and the mean, it's a practice and yeah. that's a new thing that I'm, I'm doing. But in the meantime, I have said, if there's anything else that you want me to be doing, if there's a different career path that I should be taking, kind of referencing these other different versions in the quantum, I am so open. Show me how I can serve. Show me what I can do differently. I'm open to other paths. 
and there has been nothing. It has yeah. been silence. silence. So it just, it, it more so makes me feel, okay, maybe I am just doing it, but I have to be more patient. I don't know, because I that, really, truly am open, but nothing else is coming up. God, this is so um, relevant for so many people, including myself. This this is very, I don't have the answer to what you're asking because I've been asking the same thing. I don't have the answer. Um, because even like, here's what I can say. Here's what's coming through. This is helping me as well because I'm literally in the same position, right? Here's what's coming through. Oh, this is good. Okay, got it. Okay, so as we start shifting out of, okay, in the third dimension, manifestation is very easy if you are still living in a in a very sort of lower third dimensional state of existence, right? So you manifest, you do the law of attraction, you do this, you do that, and then things start to come and, and it's great, right? But what they're saying right now, what I'm hearing is that when you start to evolve, when you start to kind of figure out how the system works, when you start to kind of move out of the matrix, when you start to move into higher frequencies, which you may or may not be aware that you're doing, manifestation doesn't work in the same way. It's it's not as it's it doesn't work any longer. It's like, wait, why 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 is it not working? Why are these things why is everything taking a lot longer? Why why is nothing coming now? Right. Um, I mean, I look back at my life five, six, seven, eight years ago, and I I could bring I like I could manifest pretty quickly. Um Dang, things. Yeah. Right now it's like yeah. freaking crickets. It's like cricket, nothing. <laughs> yeah. like, it's like patience, patience. Pa it, but yet we're so much more aware of how everything works. And so they're saying you're stepping out of manifestation. So, so. Like overthinking it. You have to step, you have to get present. You have to step out of manifestation. Okay. Here's the, here's the other thing they're saying. They're saying. The more that you manifest, oh God, the more, I don't like this one. The more that you manifest, the more you are desiring that which is not in your reality, right? So the more you are, you, the more you are resisting what is in your now, and the more that you resist what is in your now, the more you are going to be stuck in that which you are resisting. Oh, does that make sense? It so does, yeah. It's almost like, this is for me also, by the way, I keep saying that, but it really is. The more that we are kind of wanting something else, like waiting for it, crossing our fingers for it, we are literally resisting the present moment. We're, we're literally get, trying to get out of what is right here, right now. Yeah. And the messages I've been getting are just be present, just be present, yes. do what you want, but be the best version of it and yes. be really committed to where it is. For example, I have a daughter and they're like, just be a super present parent. And I'm like, but I don't want to be a blog mom or like a mom blogger. I don't want to like, you know, post on my Instagram about all the mom things I do all day because, well, that's a very important part of my life. You know, I just feel like I'm, I'm being pushed to be extra present, extra involved, extra like insta mom all of that stuff you know this is huge actually what's coming through right now because this is not this 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 process of sort of doing what we're doing right now i think a lot of us especially me was like oh my god this is going to be so great i'm going to like have love and abundance and peace and joy and bl things are just going to be amazing as i start kind of going through these shifts right and it's it feels almost like the opposite. It's like, it's like this com compact, compactor, you know, those compactors, those old school compactors. Like trash compactor. yeah. yeah. It's like, we're like, mm -hmm. and everything's getting quieter, more silent crickets. Nothing's happening. Nothing's being kind of churned inside of us to move towards anything. There's no, there's no like urge to like, oh, this is it. Oh, that is it. Nothing's happening. Nothing. But this is, this is, this is the piece that we're in requiring us to get the key to all of this is presence because the more that we are present the more that we will not only will we be free mm -hmm. not only will we be happier not only will we have more because we'll realize that we are no longer searching we're no longer struggling we're no longer trying to manifest something the more that we see something else is going to bring us what we what are we what we're desiring right now the more we're going to be in suffering right. so it's like 
the, the manifestation is is almost like a a trick to it. It's like we're gonna. I I really deeply believe that we'll eventually stop manifesting because when you're present, you don't manifest. When you're present, you don't you don't you're creating from this now. And when you create from the now, you're creating from a state of awareness. It sucks. There's nothing fun about this. Like I'm like I've been creating a partner for like two freaking years, right? It's like where's my partner? Where's my partner? Where's my partner? Where's my partner? <laughs> Right, like what's going on? And yeah. they're always like dissolve, dissolve, dissolve. You know, it's like dissolve the I need think for a partner. Even more apparent when there's so many other great things going on in your life because you get to this place where you're like, well, that's the only thing I'm going to work on because this is the only thing that's not there yet or not where I want it to be yet or it hasn't actualized and everything else is great. Like. I don't mean this as I'm not wishing it upon, but when there's multiple things that you're struggling with in life, you can kind of spread it out a little bit more. But you said, you said work on, work on, right? There's nothing to work on. See, that's the thing, right? When there's only one thing to work on, it's like, that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we're not here to work on any of it. So the, the, the way through and into the next greatest thing for you, the next thing that's going to really, um, ignite you whatever it is is to get acutely present with where we are right now because any type of manifestation is literally pulling us out of the present and i think based on especially what's going on in the world right now we have to be able to learn how to find what we're searching for isn't this what like all the gurus talked about? But like, it's tr kind of true. We have to be able to find what we are searching for out there right now, somehow. And when we start doing that, it's not going to matter if that perfect job comes that you've, that you've held for so long, even though she's out there, it won't matter anymore. And when it no longer matters, then all of a sudden things start to appear. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I've got to figure out how to put myself in that place. Cause I feel like I've tried that route before from a lower vibration and from a, a less conscious place, but I feel like I've tried that. I've, I've tried it before and those things kind of putter out, you know, trying to put my energy somewhere else, um, work positive and act, you know, try to serve in other ways. And, um, you know, maybe now that I'm in a higher vibration, cause I've worked a lot on that the last few months, um, maybe something will, will get some momentum, you know, um, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, it's just so funny being human because we we try to figure it out, right? We try yeah. to we try to crack the codes. Yeah. We're really trying to crack the codes of all of this and you know, none of us really have the answer. We have to just experience it and learn from our experience, but what I will say is that when we are attached to something, we all will always suffer. Always. Meaning when the, when there's a strong desire for something, so that's not to say that you won't have desires for things, because of course you're going to have desires for being a better person, being a better this, uh, having a better career, whatever that is. But there's a difference between attaching to it and sort of just having that desire and and holding holding the 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 highest aspect of whatever it is that's going to be popping into your life. Um, I will also say because this is coming in as well, is that life as we know it is going to continue to sort of change, okay? So what we thought was important may not be as important going forward. So they're saying, why do you think everyone is practicing presence? Why do you think everyone is being asked to practice presence? Because this is for all of us.
where humanity is going, what what we what we thought was important in our life, what we thought was would give would bring us what we need is 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 going is not going it's going to be non-existent, so to speak. Like um, our priorities are going to be shifting. Our priorities are going to change. Uh, and, and they're saying, do, do not fear this, right? There's nothing to fear around this, but but all of you are being asked to become more present for a reason. Stop denying it. Stop arguing for the limitations around it. This is the greatest gift that you're being, that you are all being given right now. And we are the humans that are like, this is not a great gift. This, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what's coming in really strongly right mm-hmm. now. And it doesn't make it easier. And we get to do whatever we're going to do anyways. We continue to manifest. We continue to, you know, um, it isn't about sitting back and not participating in life. Okay. It's about creating. It's about intending. It's about doing life. But life as we know it and the, and the priorities that we, that we have had for so long are going to start to change. They just keep saying, why do you think we're asking all of you to start practicing presence more? I don't know what that means other than there's got to be a reason for it, right? There's got to be a reason that you're having the same experience I'm having, mm-hmm. right? That, 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 that people are having the exact same experiences from totally different walks of life, yeah. right? We're, we're all having the same experiences now. It's very yeah. bizarre. There's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a reason for it, but it doesn't make it easier, yeah. You no, know, it doesn't make it easier. Um, and we get to do whatever we want to do. We can continue to manifest. We can continue to, you know, make the lists of what we want. We can continue to do whatever we want. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's really just about finding the middle ground because it's either keep doing exactly what I'm doing, which hasn't been working, or quit altogether. <laughs> so I've got to find a way to continue to maybe physically do the work in this 3d world but then release myself from it here so um i'm sure that's a practice as well so yeah I th- and i don't think you're alone you know but but here's a here's a piece specifically for you the more you stop forcing or fighting for something or trying to get to something or trying to grab something, the more you stop fighting for it or, you know, really wanting to not be what where you are, um, the faster whatever is going to be dropped will be dropped for you. It's like you're getting in your own way. Yeah, I am. <laughs> with, but without realizing that you are getting in your own way because you want it so badly and you're Okay, one more piece for you personally, just specific specific for you, is they're saying that um, you're not listening enough is what they're saying. You're not listening enough. You're not listening enough. You're not listening enough. Um, yeah, you're not or you're not trusting, or you're trying to figure out, you're trying to figure it out. All of the above, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> don't try to figure anything out. You're very, um, you want to do it right. You want to do it. You want to, you, you're like, let's go. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right. This is how, you know, it's, this is how it's going to be. I'm going to, if somebody gives me something, I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be excellent at it. And you can't do that with, the unraveling of your life. So sit quiet, sit quietly more without trying to figure out what you're doing. Meaning, am I sitting quietly? Am I listening? Am I hearing messages? Don't do that. Just be quiet. Okay. (laughs) All right. Because there is there they 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 are trying to get things across to you. Your higher self is communicating with you about things. So, um, yeah, 
Don't try to figure out what it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Fabulous, Dolly. I don't know what just happened, but you know, we just uh, we just let it all come through. So thanks for for, for sharing all that because it helped a lot of us. Oh, of course. I'm, I'm like I'm happy to. <laughs> thanks for being here as well. Yeah. Thank you. Lots of love to you. You too. Bye. It's these very subtle shifts. It's these very subtle things. And you know what? The thing that's, you know, I, I think that be, the, the most courageous thing that we can be doing right now is, is not trying to, um, not trying to create an old world, right? Not trying to, man, we're being asked to live in such different places right now. Um, such different places. We're, we're being asked to just live so differently. And I wish that I had more answers to, to why or any of that. I don't. But I do know that life is changing. The world is changing drastically. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty um, fascinating. Okay, I don't know how it's only, I've only done two people. Um, it's crazy. Okay, hold on. I can't see. Oh, I love that, Kim. You can't solve a problem or create something new from the same same state of consciousness that created it. Genius. It's true. Hi. Hi. Yay. Yay. I knew it. And Jenny knew it too. We both knew it. Today's my day. I love it. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, everybody else's questions have helped me so much and and certainly brought me a lot of the peace that I needed to hear. I always need to hear it again and again and again, again and again. And again. And again. But for me, for me, it mostly is just around I, I rescue animals. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Oh. I know, I know all the work that you do with Asher House and and I mean, he's amazing and it's so amazing. Yeah. If you I guys don't know Lee Asher in the Asher house, go follow yeah. him. He's, he's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah. Well, I have eight special needs while well, mostly special needs dogs at my house that live with me. And I think what keeps me frozen in fear and I know, I know everything I should be doing. I know, I know I go through the motions. I choose, I, you know, try to be present. I pull myself out of it, but it's the frozen in fear over being separated, them coming to take me away for, to put it as simply as I can and leaving my animals without me. I only want to outlive my animals. I'm not scared of what comes after. I'm happy to go wherever they want to take me, but it's the thought of being separated from them. It just keeps me in that, that loop. That fear loop. Yeah. Yep. So, so tell me the story that you're following. The story is you're going to be taken away somewhere. They're going to be left all alone and then they're going to die or yep. nobody's going to take. So that's the, that's the, yep. that's the fear loop. Yep. That's pretty much it. Yep. Yep. And it's all the time. It's, it's always consciously trying to pull myself out of that, but trying to be present, trying to, you know, see how amazing they are. I'm so fortunate. I live in a beautiful place. I have abundance. I don't, you know, my job isn't pressuring me to take a jab. I, I have so much and I'm so lucky that my life is dedicated to these animals and I get to their care. I'm a hermit. I'm saying, you know, like I'm, and even more so lately, I don't need to be around people a lot. I don't need to, you know, go out in the world in this craziness. 
but I live and breathe for these animals and they need me. And, and I mean, I need them too, obviously it works both ways, but, but trying to celebrate life and be happy and enjoy them. And, you know, animals times are fleeting anyway. They're not here as long as we are. And, and literally my only goal is to outlive my animals so that I know they're okay. So this is such a great, another, I mean, I feel like every one of you so far is talking about what so many of us are going through. Obviously not the same exact fear. Yeah. But there are loop fear loops that a lot of us are living in right now. I have a fear loop that I tap into every once in a while of being taken away and no longer seeing my mom or my brother, you know, that I could tap into that for a moment. Right. And it's disgusting. Like my stomach drops. It's like, I'm not going there. Yeah. Right. So for you, it sounds like you don't, you don't feel like you have the ability to jump off the loop, jump off the hamster wheel. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if one of the suggestions that I would recommend is first of all, as you're starting to feel the hamster wheel go, as you as you're starting to feel it rev up, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, and then you start to just dive into the off you go, and you're just in the hamster wheel, you're in the loop, it is real, it is happening, it's in my stomach, it's in my body, I'm feeling all of it, right? One of the things I would recommend, because I'm assuming, I don't know what that feels like, right? But I'm assuming that it feels out of control. I'm assuming like you don't have control over it. And I'm a control freak. Yeah. So <laughs> a lot of anxiety is probably swirled up in that fear. So anxiety and fear can feel very um, all consuming, literally like it is has control over you. Okay. Now I've said this a thousand bazillion times. You've heard this a thousand bazillion times. I'm going to say it again. And I want you to maybe practice and maybe I'll do like a meditation and stick it up to practice um, feeling anxiety and fear as an energy. The moment that you start to find your you have to get real conscious and the observer. OK, if you if you want to step out of this. I'm assuming you do so. You, the second you start to notice yourself, oh, here it comes. And you can start to feel the wheels turn and then it's starting to rev up and then it's getting louder. And then the next thing you know, you are in it, the fear and the anxiety. And it's like, oh my God, it's overwhelming. And it takes over you. In that moment, do you have the ability or can you practice? First, here it comes. First, Oh my God, here it is. Oh my God, here it is. Oh my, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. So you're not, you're not it. Yeah. Okay. You have to start to physically and energetically feel yourself detach from it. So you've got to not let it take, sweep you up. You've got to be like, oh, here it is. Oh, I'm in it. Oh, I'm in this now. Okay. I'm in it. Right. Second, while you're recognizing that you're in it, can you recognize that it is consciousness or energy? Just, th just through your thought. Oh, this is a, this is consciousness. I am experiencing consciousness. So one, oh, I'm in it. Holy God! Oh my God! They're they're gonna they're gonna take me. My kid, my my babies are gonna be all left all alone. They're gonna die. They're gonna starve. They're gonna not have water. Right? Oh, I'm in something. Two. I am experiencing consciousness or energy swirling inside my physical body. That's what's actually happening on an energetic level. Okay. That's not going to take it away, but those are the first steps of recognizing that I'm actually in control. The third thing that you're going to want to start to do, if you can do this, is breathing or closing your eyes and like literally training your breath to calm you down, to move it through you, right? Calm you down, calm you down, calm you down. Where am I right now? My dogs are okay. Where am I right now? My dogs are okay. Where am I right now? My dogs are okay. I'm okay. I'm, but but what's going to happen? This is going to, right? It's going to pull you. Fear and anxiety, boom. Yeah. Where am I right now? My dogs are okay. Pet your dogs, feel your dogs. I'm okay, right? And you're going to start to breathe. You're going to slow the hamster wheel down. Wherever you are in that moment, 
one, I'm in something. Two, it's consciousness. You're just going to think that. Three, close my eyes or even keep your eyes open, but it's easier when your eyes are closed and literally breathe your, the breathe, use your breath to start to move that fear and anxiety through. And I guarantee you're going to be pulled into it. You're going to use your breath again, pulled into it, use your breath again. Where am I? Where am I? Where are my dogs? Let me feel my dogs. Where am I? I'm in my couch. Where am I? I'm on my kitchen sink or my kitchen chair. Where are my dogs? Where am I? Where are my dogs? It's getting you present. It's bringing you back to right here, right now, which is where you always are, which is safe because you have no idea what's going to happen. But it doesn't matter me telling you that, right? Because you know that you don't know what's going to happen. That makes that's like, okay, so what else, right? You These are tangible ways for you to recognize that in, fear and anxiety are literally uh, taking you for a roller coaster ride, right? And so if you can practice those things, also, because you're a little spicy, you have a little, a little attitude in you, right? <laughs> the, the fourth thing you can do is you can say you you don't have control over me, right? So you're closing your eyes and you're breathing. It's like you don't have control over me. You don't have control over me. You don't have control over me. I am okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. You don't have control over me. Because a lot of times we, we fear and anxiety are so powerful that we forget who we are while we're in it. And then we come out of it and we're like, what the freak just happened? Well, I get mad at myself because I know better. Yes. I've been practicing. I've done so much work and it's like, I've done all this internal work and all the trauma work. And, and I've, I'm so happy with where I am. Like I've come so far in the last year and a half, two years, and I just want to enjoy a peaceful freaking life with my dogs. And then the, we yeah. start. It's like, start piss off, piss off. Start, yeah start start bringing that kind of spicy piece to the fear and the anxiety so there's all these different aspects of you right we all have these different aspects of us and a lot of times fear and anxiety will want us to all just kind of lay down and, and hand and hand hand it all over and it's like oh no 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 you don't no you don't no you don't no you don't no you do not but you have to feel it like you can't deny it, right? Yeah. You can't try to. And that's the line I was walking between just pushing it away. Like, do I just go, no, like just push no. It down? Yeah. No. So as soon as you start to feel the, re the feel it, re the other weird thing that we do as humans, this is going to sound really strange, but we actually do this. There is a weird piece of us, aspect of us that actually enjoys being in that narrative. It's very weird. It's not conscious. But it's like we're comfortable in it, even though we don't like it and we don't want to feel it. There is a, there is a, a comfortableness in it that we feed off of in some way. It's um, like sadomasochistic kind is of it right? like being a victim, like victimhood is not really victimhood. It's more of uh, maybe maybe it's yeah. a piece of an aspect of victimhood, but it's it's just comfortable. Yeah. It's just like, well, this is comfortable. I hate this. This is comfortable. I hate this. This is comfortable. I hate this. So if you can practice those four steps, right? As soon as, because what happens is we go numb or unconscious, meaning we, we just allow it to happen when we start experiencing it. And then we yeah. become the victim to it. Yeah. So as soon as, Again, let's go over the four steps. As soon as you start to feel the engine revving, it's like, oh, here it comes. Oh, here it comes. Oh, right. And it's getting louder and louder. And then it just takes you away. Recognize, oh my God, here it is. I'm in it. 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 I am in it. I am in something. Second, okay, this is just logic thinking. You're going to just think this is just, this is, this is just me experiencing a massive amount of fear and anxiety. And those consciousnesses are very controlling while you're feeling it, right? It's, these, these are consciousnesses. Visualize if you can. This is energy moving through my body. Holy cow. Because you can feel it so viscerally, right? Yeah. Oh my God, this is energy moving through my body. Oh my God. 2.5 in between two and three. It's not real meaning it's not you. It literally is just energy, right? Doesn't help, but you can throw that little 2.5 piece in. Number three, close your eyes and start using your breath. Calm your nervous system and your parasympathetic system down. Calm your systems down because the, 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 the frequency of fear and anxiety is like a swirling 
de devil thing, you know, one of those swirling dervish things. It's just going to move all over your body. And so if you can calm yourself down, it'll assist in moving that energy out. It's like somebody turned a fan on in your body and it's on high and you just need to turn the fan low. That's all. You just got to turn that fan down, back down, right? And so you use your breath to turn the fan back down. And then you, then you remind yourself, okay, I'm fine. I'm in my house. My dogs are safe. I'm fine. I'm in my house. My dog, my dogs are safe. Everything's fine. Where, where am I right now? Where am I right now? Where am I right now? And then the, that's the third step, right? Using the breath and saying, where am I? Fourth step is bring out your spiciness. Bring out your spiciness and say, what the freak? No way, Jose, you know, or whatever words you want to use, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. No, I, higher self, Andrea, like I am in charge and you're not going to, you can literally talk to fear and anxiety like they're pests, like they're bullies. You're not going to take over. You're not yeah. taking over. You're not taking over. You're not taking over. Um, and you'll have to probably do this. I don't know. I don't know how many times because we're so conditioned to just give our power away to consciousness, to energy, to emotion, um, as if we don't have the ability. We're smaller, like yeah, yeah. like what? Like what? Mm -hmm. It's strictly yeah. energy. It's crazy when we really start to practice. And, and what's going to happen when you do this is you're going to. It's like you're you're going up against the biggest beast that you could possibly go up against. And so when then when you start feeling other things that you don't like to feel, it's going to be nothing. You're going to be like, dude, I got that. Feeling anger? Nah. Feeling sadness? Nah. Feeling whatever you feel, you're going to be like, poof. Yeah. That's got nothing on yeah. it compared to how I conquered uh, the ability to let fear and anxiety move through my body. Because the thing about it is it has to move through the body. You can't yeah. deny it, right? And a lot of times we want to take medicine or we want to take, we want to numb out. We want to do things so that we don't feel the high fan. And all that does is creates disease, discomfort, um, swollen, you know, our body gets swollen, um, irritability. There's all kinds of things that happen because we don't allow ourselves to feel the fan on high and then do techniques that can turn the fan down. The te techniques is the part that I was missing. And I mean, it gets to the point where it just creates, like it feels, I've never been one who's suffered from mental illness it, that I, I mean, that I know of. <laughs> I'm crazy, but that's beside the point. <laughs> but it gets that, that hamster wheel creates thoughts that are dark. They're like, it's like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to, what's the point in being here if they're just going to take me away anyways, and I'm going to be separated from my dogs. They're the reason I'm here. So I'm tapping out like, and, and that's yeah. not who I want to be like I and I was missing the coping mechanism part of it. So thank you for that. Well, it's a really important question because this may be, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the future and, and we're not and we but but the, but the ability to cope with anxiety is going to be necessary for a lot of us especially if you're in countries right now where you're really yeah. starting to feel the suffocation of your free your freedom and your rights being taken away right you, you're going to have a you you may be experiencing a lot of anxiety so it's really interesting this this super chat because it's really preparing us to be able to navigate the world right now and what may be coming so your question is so, so, so powerful and so relevant um, for all of us, you know, and any of us can do this for any emotion that we feel or anything that is, that is, feels like it's taking over us. Um, you know, it's, it's important to remember that we are in charge, that we are empowered, that we are sovereign. And it's also very important to remember that consciousnesses are powerful and when they are in the body and we're feeling them in the body it's overwhelming it's debilitating it can be very debilitating like you literally have lost you're 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 you you you're you're not who you are in those moments um that's what rage does to a lot of people you know people that have a lot of rage 
you know, you watch those like really weird Dateline shows where it's like, I don't know what happened, but I went into a fit of rage and I killed someone, you know, it's because yeah. they couldn't regulate the, the consciousness. They couldn't regulate the rage. Yeah. And so they let the rage take over. And if any of, you know, if you've experienced that kind of feeling before with anxiety, stress, worry, fear, all of that, it can take over and it can turn you into somebody that you're not. Yeah. So really being able to recognize first that you're in something, second, that it's just business or energy. Third, you use your breath and you remind yourself of where you are right here, right now. And then fourth, you you use your spunky, spiky, spicy sauce that you are, you know, <laughs> and it'll probably help. It may be challenging in the very beginning. It may not. You may breeze through it. And, um, you know, it's I, here's what I do want to say about anxiety and fear we are in this collective shadow, right? So we are going to see and feel anxiety and fear, perhaps. There's nothing wrong with that. So it's not like all of a sudden you may never feel anxiety and fear again, but it's it's going to be dimmed down. So right now the fan is on high and you may feel it on like the lowest degree possible, right? So it's not going to have such an impact on you, um, as you as you as you move forward. And, and, and you know, Let's just say that it does get to a, that kind of scenario, right? You will have, something's going to uh, appear where your dogs are going to be okay, but you'll have the ability to navigate it and not, you know, drop to your knees and, and have a heart attack because you've been practicing everything that you've been practicing. I'm not saying that's going to happen, okay? <laughs> but, you know, we have to be able to navigate the world we're in and, um, and, it's, it's getting cuckoo out there. It's getting crazy out there, you know? So, and uh, it, it's, this is, this is important information that you brought up for us to, to practice. Yeah. And I mean, right. I guess understanding that the animals are consciousness too. And uh, I mean, have they chosen to be here and go through this too? Is that part of it? Because that changes it for me too. I mean, they are, they are, they are, they are just like you and I, they're not, they're not, they're, they're the same consciousness, right? So they're going to be okay at the end, no matter what happens, I'm going to be okay. Yes. They're going to be okay. Yeah. They're going to be okay. And it, it, it doesn't make it easy to watch humans suffer. It doesn't make it easy to watch animals suffer. It doesn't make it easy to watch insects suffer. Like it's not fun to watch anything suffer on this yeah. planet. Okay. Um, but everything is consciousness. Everything is spirit. Everything is soul. Everything is alive in that sense. And, um, and everything makes it out of here, right? It's everything makes it out of here, meaning everything gets to leave this physicality and who they are as consciousness is always, uh, alive. It, it's, it's always existing. Um, so it doesn't, that doesn't make it easier to watch, you know, um, no. that, you know, s things unravel, but animals um, are highly evolved beings. Yeah. That's why they chose to be animals. Yeah. You got to be pretty highly evolved to choose to come into a physical form that doesn't have the same kind of free will that a human has, yeah. you know, and um, it takes a lot of courage as a spirit or as a consciousness to do that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And that's where my spicy side comes in because then I get mad because I feel like I'm being robbed of my time with them, which Stay present. You got to you got to practice presence too. Yeah. The second you start to tap into what may be happening or what could happen or the way the world is unraveling, right? You got to come back to where am I right now? You know, one of the things that's been coming in for me the last couple of days is this um this phrase of like we have to start to squeeze you know, squeeze out life in every moment that we're in, really squeeze the juice out of every moment that we're experiencing right now. 
Um, and, and, and when we do that, it allows us to stay present. So the more that we can just devour the ability to have the experiences that we're having right now, the more we're going to be able to be present and enjoy what we have, right? So as soon as mind goes to, oh my God, they're going to do this, or oh my God, I'm not going to be able, how much longer do I have with you guys? Or the second we go into that, that's an opportunity to come right back to how can I juice this moment? Yeah. How can I how can I squeeze the juice out of this moment with my dogs right now? I can just look at them. I can just feel the, the love, right? That's bringing you back to presence. And that's really the key to, to navigating all of this right now. Yeah. It's like constantly asking yourself, how can I squeeze the most life out of these moments that I'm living um, over and over and over and over and over? I'm going to practice my four steps. <laughs> Yay. I think we're all going to practice them. I don't think you're alone. I think we're all going to be like, you know, how did it go? How did it go for you? That's so great. But yeah, it was, that was a brilliant um, opportunity for us to, to, um, to navigate. Man, millions and millions of people, they need that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank so you much. for bringing it into our awareness and letting us learn from you. Thank you. It meant the world to be able to talk to you. I love you, my friend. Thank you for everything. Thank you. You're I love you too. Dogs, what a gift you are. <laughs> oh, they're the gift. They are the they gift. Are the Absolutely. Yeah. They are the gift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks yeah. so much. Thank Lots of love you. to you. Lots of love to you too. Bye. Bye. Man, I might put that up as a post. That was powerful. Um, that was great. Hopefully that will work for, for, um, for all of us. I think I might be getting tired. How's it going? Hi, sunshine. How are you, Lori? Good. How are you? Mm, I feel better now than I did a couple of days ago. It was pretty heavy and angry and ooh, mm -hmm. like, ooh. like mm -hmm. I felt like I had something gripping a hold of me that I couldn't shake off any of that funk at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like it was on you. <sighs> More yeah. than on me. Like it was strangling me. Yeah. It's, and how do we, how, how is it now? Um, a little bit better, I think, because I set up an appointment with my Reiki master. And every time I do that, I'm fine before I get to the appointment. <laughs> that makes oh, sense. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, you I put things it. In, so we put things into motion and by the time it arrives, it's done. So that's interesting. The whole planning for the future thing doesn't, you're again, you're beating a dead horse. It, it doesn't work. No. <laughs> but it, it, it does, it relieves something in you. So it, there's a, it's meant, it's like a mental, it's a mental game that you, that, that happens or something. It does. It, something else that's been happening as well is that um, my bullshit meter is really sensitive. Yes. Like, yeah. You can just feel the BS roll off a television, roll off one of your friends' mouths. It's actually just like, not. So it's not BS. What it is is, um, it's it's you're you're tapping into the 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 dissonance or the dis this the discord. So, um, when you start watching people, so they're they're out of alignment. So they are speaking or doing from a place that is not authentic they it's it's not um it's not their 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 it's like if they were in an aligned state they would be speaking something completely different so they're off kilter they're out of alignment and they it's almost like they're somewhat robotic in a sense you can tell that they're just not quite there 
or there it's like there's a robotic sort of experience that you may be having with people where it, and that's basically what's happening is they're not in an aligned state they're out of alignment and so they are being or doing based on these external things that have been given to them or shown to them and and it, it it's pulled them out of alignment and so then when you hear them and you listen you're like but that's not authentic that's not real that's not actually you know who what is of your highest aligned state and it becomes more and more obvious right it's getting harder and harder to uh, feed into their delusions yeah I mean, how you, if you're not in a lot if you're not if you if you understand what you're seeing on an energetic level you won't be able to i mean i've lost four or five 20 plus year friends since all this ascension has started mm. and I just have to look at it as I'm, I'm expanding, right? I'm growing and they're stuck and I can't, I can't fix that. So I keep moving. And they might not even be stuck. Are they just sitting there because they want to be or? They're just choosing a different way to be. <laughs> They're just choosing a completely different way to be. So what, what, what happens when we start recognizing what's actually going on energetically is, or what we want to be aware of, what we want to be conscious of is that we're not right. Yeah, I've got that problem. Right. I, I want to be right. <laughs> we're not right. And, and what I mean when I say we're not right is this isn't the this isn't the right way to go. This is just the way to go if you are consciously moving through evolution. It, that it's just a natural process. But it's not the right way. It's not the absolute way, right? It, it's gonna it, it's an opportunity that everyone has, but not everyone's gonna choose it because everyone has free will. And so it's just as there, there's just as much honoring in not choosing to see and not choosing than it is to choose and start courageously awakening out of what we're in, right? So when when we can start to do that, when we can start to hold that, you won't feel as much angst, anger, stress, uh, restriction, frustration, you won't start, you'll, though that will start to dissolve and you also won't be impacted by people. When you can start to recognize that all of these people with the, the B, the BS stuff that, you know, the stuff you're watching and you're like, you, you, well, you gotta be kidding me, right? <laughs> you're, you're joking, yeah. right? Yeah. If you can use the lens of, okay, you know, and this is very challenging, but we practice it because it frees us is this is their choice. This is their free will. They are, they are unconsciously choosing to be in that, in that. And by the way, PS, a lot of us were in that. <laughs> a lot of us were in that. So now we're all of a sudden we're judging, right? People that we used to be. So we, it, it, the more that we can see it as one big, huge game, right? And everyone has this opportunity, but we're not better than, we're not, we're not more advanced or smarter. We're just choosing to consciously jump on the train of evolution, right? And watch ourselves start to move. And they're unconsciously choosing not to right now. Most likely they will eventually jump on the train. They'll be forced to jump on the train of evolution, right? But the more that we can recognize that it, it is all free will and that I'm not better than, I'm just consciously aware of what's happening. This is not an easy thing to do because you look at the new, I went, I watched the news the other day just to see what was happening, right? I just wanted to say like, what, what is going on in the news? And I was floored. My, I was more, I was more heart, my heart broke more than anything because I realized just how much um, brainwashing and, and mind control is re I mean, it's gotten really, really bad. So my heart broke for a lot of people. And it also allowed me to have a little bit more compassion. Like, wow, they really, no wonder they're so afraid. No wonder they're where, you know, no wonder. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, it's, it's asking us to have more compassion. It's asking us to have more empathy. It's asking us to be able to practice that. And in no way, shape or form is that easy. 
especially if you're losing friends and you're watching it and you're like, yeah, it's, it's difficult. Um, um, my best friend, uh, he, he is awake. Um, but we've been best friends since we were 13 and I'm 46 this year. And he called me a liar. He said I was lying and said that my ego was in the way. And if that was him, I like had to ask my wife, I'm like, am I crazy? <laughs> Is this me? I'm supposed to ask first, you know, it could be something I'm doing. Yeah. It wasn't anything I was doing. She listened to the whole conversation. He was on speakerphone. I was in my courtyard. It was like, he, you're not crazy. Yeah. Okay, I'm not crazy. So I had to let him go. Oh. I mean, that was like super duper duper hard. Like I had the cords pulled. I had the blocks put up if I needed them, you know, like the, you can't get in here, get an egg or something. You ain't coming here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But it just, it, the weight of the world, how do you uh, release that more than just being present? Because, you know, my present is sometimes really boring. So I pick up this stupid thing and I'm looking at this dumb thing and it consumes me. Like the weight of the world will consume me and I'll do meditations, I'll breathe. I do all this stuff. And then I'm pissed off. Even after the meditation, I'm angry. Like I'm ready to explode. Like I could go nuclear at any point. I mean, <laughs> welcome to uh, what we're in right now. You know, I mean, the, 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 the beautiful thing is that you're honest about it and that you're, uh, that you're, that you aren't, it doesn't sound like you beat yourself up that much about no, no, it. No, no, no. Yeah. So the, 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 we want to be able to allow ourselves to go through what we're going through with, with compassion, with laughter, with, with, with art, with, 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 with however we're showing up, let's just show up. The, the piece that's really important though, is that we don't perpetuate it and we don't project it back out. Right. And and that is key. That is key, 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 key is because I will catch myself. I will, I will watch something on my phone. By the way, I don't know if you guys are noticing this, but this has become much more addictive. It's hard. Yeah. Oh my so God, to put it down. There's or something like, happening. Here, have like, another computer, have an yeah. iPad. <laughs> so on an energetic level, um, I was shown that there is definitely something happening. I don't want to go into some weird conspiracy stuff there, but there is definitely something happening right now um, where humanity is being squeezed into more of a zombified or um, zombie like state. If you've noticed how much more, at least for myself, it's like, I'm constantly like, Where's my, where's my phone? Looking at my phone, looking at my phone, right? I'll be doing something and it's like, I don't even want to look at my phone and I'm looking at my phone, right? So there's definitely something happening. We have to be aware of that and be at least conscious of it. But um, this, what we're going through is like we've said before so many times, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a mess. It's crazy what we're, what we're having to experience. So the more that you can just allow yourself to have it all, right? Because you're going to do meditations. And then you're going to get in your car and you're going to lose your mind. That's just the world we're in right now. That's it. You can't pretend that you're going to sit. You can't. If you pretend that you aren't feeling what you're feeling, it's going to be even worse. Then you're really going to lose your mind. Right. So we want to be OK with the fact that, like, I'm doing everything I possibly can. I'm bored out of my ever loving mind. I'm you know, nothing's nothing's giving me any juice anymore. I'm losing friends. I go outside and I want to sh I, I literally can't stand what I'm seeing. Right. This is the world that a lot of us are in. And so you have to learn how to navigate. You have to start to learn new tools and new techniques. It's, and I'll tell you what, at least for myself, every single day, it's practicing compassion all day long. How can you like discern that from feeling sorry for someone? Because you're not supposed to feel sorry for someone. Compassion well, versus feeling sorry for another person. I, 
I can't, I don't know. Okay, so feelings, let me tap into what feeling sorry feels like. Feeling sorry. No, feeling sorry is a victim mentality. And I don't put people in victimhood. So okay. if I, if it, I, I, I don't really ever look at someone and go, oh my God, I feel so sorry for them. Because I don't see anyone in victim mentality. I see everyone, even if they're unconscious, as free willed beings that are choosing that. And so I, if that's how I can hold compassion because even though they're unconscious, they're choosing that. And that's the experience that they are having right now. And they may be mind controlled and they may be being programming, but I'm, I'm having compassion for that human journey. Like, wow, that is their freaking human journey. And, and I, I practice it all day long, <laughs> all day long. And I will catch myself. And then I will say, you don't know what it's like to be in their shoes. You don't know the kind of fear they have. You don't know. You don't know, Lori. Okay, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Not everyone has to be like you, Lori. That's right. That's right. Not everyone's going to be like you, Lori. You're not right. You're not the best person in the world, Lori. Like I'm saying these things over and over and over, right? Just because you see it that way, Lori, doesn't mean that anyone else ever has to see it your way. So I, these are things that are in my head all day long as I'm engaging with the world, you know? And, you know, I, today when I was sitting on my bench meditating, these two women were walking by and I was listening to their conversation and, you know, my instinct was this younger version of me really wanted to say something, right? Like I really wanted to be like, do you have any idea, right? Dot, 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 right? And instead, it was very challenging for me, So, but instead I said, okay, can I hold compassion for her? Right. Can I hold compassion for her? And I, at that moment, I couldn't because I was so shocked by what she was saying. It was challenging for me to hold compassion in that moment. So be it. Right. I had another chance two hours later and I could hold compassion. So for me, it's all about recognizing what I'm experiencing and constantly reminding myself that this is practice of holding compassion because it's not going to get easier as there's going to be more that's going to be unraveling, right? Like we're going to see more, more, more. So we either struggle and suffer through it and, and fight against it, or we do what you're doing, right? Which is allowing yourself to recognize that all the things that used to work for me aren't working any longer. Yeah. The manifestation, as you were talking a couple chats ago is like, I could meditate in the morning and three new clients would come right in. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Not that it's right crazy. now. <laughs> I'm just like, what are we doing wrong? What's it's the formula? <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting how we're we're living in very different um in different ways now and the, the things that used to work don't work because we're not in that frequency anymore. We're not in that world anymore and you know, there's no, there, you know, anyone that says they have the answers are lying to you because they've never been here before, you know, so they don't have the answers yet. We're all doing this on our, we're all doing this together. We're, you know, uh, every single one of you that came in, I'm like right there with you. I'm like, yep, right there with you. Yep. Right there with you. Um, we're all, do, we're all trying to figure this out, you know, and um, because we've never done it in this fashion before. Um, so it's, it's, um, I mean, one of the greatest parts about these super chats is that we get to hear everybody else's stuff and we're like, oh my God, I'm not the only one, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. losing my mind. I'm not going crazy. Um, but I do think it's really important what you were saying around, okay, so the things that we used to work aren't working. Okay. Don't beat yourself up. You know, I'm having a lot more rage or anger or frustration or just like, what the heck? Okay. So yes, of course you are. How could you not be right? Um, I'm sure there's a ton of people in the community that are like, oh, I'm fine. Everything's great. Nothing's impacting me. Um, and that's great too. But we have to honor where we're at. And um, yeah, like, <gasps> I can't yeah. breathe. I can't move. Yeah. Things are, things are. So here's three things that, um, that are really important to practice right now. Because that molasses feeling, that slowness, that like, uh, am I, am I'm, I'm a walking dead kind of feeling piece. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of us are feeling it and it's not it's not us so it's um it's a it's um it's well i'll just say this it's happening to the entire human collective so there's three things that we can do as we start to become aware of this kind of feeling of like zombified the walking dead kind of weird like i'm living but i'm not living yeah First thing is moving your body, right? Like it's really, really, really important to move the body because when we move our bodies, it moves whatever it is that's kind of been coming into our bodies, it allows it to move through the body. So that's the first piece, walking, moving, anything. The second thing is allowing yourself to, to, to rest. So just as much as you're moving around and doing things, you've got to let yourself be exhausted and sleep. You've got to let yourself rest. You've got to lay, you've got to sit, you've got to, you've got to rest. It's massive, massive, massive. And then of course, the third thing they were saying was the, so what is occurring with humanity is that they, there is a, there is such a powerful mind controlling thing that's happening where people are not aware of the fact that they have choice any longer. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of scary. And so what they said for number three is you've, we have got to start to become so acutely aware of our choice. I'm talking about the choice of how you wake up in the morning, the choice of what toothpaste you're using, the choice of what you eat every day, the choice of how you get into your car. Like, so acutely aware of our choice so that our choice is never numbed down because what is happening is that a lot of humanity is no longer aware or is their choice is slowly beginning to be, get quieted or numbed. And so their choice is being made by external, by the external. Mm. And they think they're Influences. making that choice. They think that they're making that choice. It's very subtle and it's very frightening. But what is occurring is that humanity is being convinced that they're making a choice and they're empowered in that choice, but that choice is not theirs. So the more that you can be acutely aware of your choice, the easier it will be to continue to move through everything that's unraveling for us. So moving the body is essential, essential. Resting is essential. And then acute awareness of your choice. You want to, I think I did a video on this, but we have to start to recognize that choice is literally a muscle that if we don't keep exercising it, if we don't keep exercising choice, it is it is one of the first things to start to go. Meaning you'll think that this is not going to happen to us because we are acutely aware of everything, but we just want to stay acutely aware of it because whatever <laughs> is happening out there, it's beyond um, kind of a physical experience at times. It can be very energetic. And so you want to be aware of the energies moving through your body and you want to be aware of, of what you have control over, which is, you, which is your choice. Um, and you don't want to, you know, belittle or name call people that aren't aware of it yet. You know, we really don't want, we, we are, we really, the ones that are really aware of what's happening and courageously going through this, we are the last ones that should be calling people names or um, creating divide, belittling, bullying, right? Um, because we should be the ones that are so acutely aware of what's happening that we should, e we should have even more compassion I mean, we understand what's happening. We should be the ones that have the most compassion, right? Because we're not the ones that are um, kind of numbed out with to it all right now. We're aware. That should give us more compassion. Um, but that's what we're learning. That's really what we're learning. 
Well, yeah. thank you so much for that, Lori. I know that you're hungry and you've been doing this for, wow. Since Three hours. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> you're toast, girl. I'm cutting you loose. <laughs> Where do you live? I live in Southern California, um, okay. Rancho Mirage near. Oh, um, I know where that is. So if you ever want to come down, I have a spare room. I love Rancho Mirage. I live in a giant house Damn. with like some cool art and a giant pool. It's There's just a me, really my wife fancy. And my, Go ahead. It's just me, my wife, and my little dog, Poppy. Oh, mm. he's so cute. There's a really fancy schmancy like steakhouse restaurant that my uncle used to take us to. Um, and we used to eat outside. I don't remember the name of it. Oh, Poppy. Look at you. <laughs> if I take the earbuds off, the, it will be an echo in here. She's so precious. Poppy. Hi, Poppy. You want to look, you want to say hi to Lori, honey? Hi, Poppy. Look right here at this green light. Ooh. What's up? Hi, precious one. She's hi, so precious. sweet. She's so aware of everything. Oh my God. She's so cute. She's adorable. She's my COVID puppy. I love it. She's like, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. She's a year. She's like 15 or 16 months now. She's precious. She's done growing five pounds. That's it. I, I needed something that I could pick it up with a tissue. You know, I'm yeah. a snow shovel person. <laughs> yeah. Smart, smart. All right, my love. It's been fabulous. Have a good dinner. And Thank we'll you. see you. We'll see you next Wednesday, right? Next At ten o'clock. Ten a.m. See you then. Okay. Mwah. Bye. Bye, love. All right, Poppy. Thanks for showing yourself, you special little thing. Um. All right. I'm gonna do one more person really fast. I'm gonna make this a fast one because it's been three hours, and I don't know how I have been able to keep going. But is Sue still here? Let's see if Sue's still here. Oh, no, she's gone. I was going to pull her up. She's gone. It's got to be a quick one because I'm losing my energy. I was tr I was going to get Sue. All right. I need somebody that's got a, a real quick, quick question. Okay, Irma, give me a quick question. And then I'm going to I tail it out of here. Grace, I appreciate your um, honesty. <laughs> I'm not quick. I love it. Okay, Irma, give me something fast. Quick. I had a feeling I was going to be doing a long one today. I could feel it. All right, lovely love, love. Let's do I this. Was, I was brand new on your Patreon and you did a, a, a live and I had gotten picked as an alternate. But I just oh. absolutely... I was, I'm in school, I take care of my parents and my life is a crazy nut house. And when I saw I didn't get picked, I was like, oh darn, well, I guess I'll do homework tonight. And then you, I saw the replay, I'm like, no. <laughs> and I won't waste too much of your time. I'm just like, I get goosebumps all over me. because it's Yay, like, <laughs> I love your shirt. Your shirt's amazing. Of course, of course, loving, I just, I listen, I, I am a brand new baby at this, spiritual awakening. I feel like I've been, I'm going to like hyperventilate now, but um, <laughs> like I've been aware and awake for probably a couple years now, as far as just like really understanding, but I really only just picked up the, this side of the spiritual growth just in like the last year. My brother introduced me to um, Mitchell Gibson and then I got like, way, I'm like, what is happening? And because I was such a like Christian and all this stuff. And I didn't know. I mean, I, you know, anyway, anyway, so my thing is, I'm just like so new 
but I feel like I feel like I am just such a, a humongous bundle of energy that needs to be unleashed in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's I like me. It. But right now um, I'm in a hole because I, I moved from Virginia to take care of my mom and dad full time because they're elderly and they needed help. And so I was the only one that was living by myself. And I left my kids and grandkids up there to come take care of my parents full time. And right after I got here, they started getting all kinds of sick and crazy cancers and stuff going on. So <laughs> it became a full time experience. And I had just started college back because I had just ended a 16 year relationship, my marriage. And I was a high school dropout and I decided to go get my GD and go to college. And I'm like, I'm going to do me now because I've always done everybody else. But anyway, so I'm kind of in a holding pattern which is, oh my God, exactly what I needed to be able to, to grow spiritually and all that. But I just kind of like feel like I have no idea what I'm going to do, what it is that I feel like I have so much to offer, but I have no idea where to go. Like I, I have no direction other than keep growing. And I mean, I'm, I'm just a baby. Um, I'm definitely, I guess what I want to know is, am I as in touch with myself as I think I am? Cause I haven't quite like my third eyes not opened or whatever, you know, but I'm, I'm definitely in the meditating. I feel like I've, I've gotten in touch. Things are changing. Like your I can third see eye something. is open. Your third eye is open. You think, I know I can see energy now, like things are changing and evolving. And I definitely feel my intuition. I mean, I'm definitely feeling connected. That's what I want to share with you. Okay. Please, please. Okay. Don't listen to how anybody else is going to tell you how this works or unfolds. That's the first piece. You you get to unfold and unravel this the way you want to. You're you make the rules. So whatever I say, whatever some other teacher says, you can listen to it. OK, but you're the one that's going to be making these rules going forward in terms of how you are going to walk through this and how you're going to move through this. You're in charge. Absolutely. OK, so you get to make you get to decide all of it. That's very important for you to to really own. Um, and if you decide that your third eye isn't open, then your third eye won't be open. But do you want to do you want that? So this is how powerful you have to step. This is the power that you need to step into. If you decide that your third eye isn't open, then that's what's going to happen. Or you can say, no, my third eye, I'm, you have to own you. This, what's happening right now for you is you owning you for the first time, really owning you, really stepping into you, like really feeling you and, and who you are and who you've always been, but you have suffocated this aspect of you in order to be able to live the, the human life that you've had to live. You know, and so now it's like you are you are breaking free and you are starting to become and step into who you have always been, always been. Um, and it gets to be your show. It gets to be your story. It gets to be yours. And what you have to offer, you haven't even touched the surface of. You've just opened the book. You've got pages and pages to start to read and to devour about yourself, right? And, and learn about yourself. And it doesn't have to take long, quote unquote, long. It, it's going to take you deprogramming yourself from the way that you have always been. So the patterns that you have always fallen into, paying attention to those, pay attention to the programs, pay attention to everything that you've always done and stop doing it that way. Right. <laughs> right. Stop doing it. This is the it's moment. It's been hard not to put everybody else first. You know, yeah. that's where I've been all my life. So it's been so the, strange. This I'm getting you're, better at it. <laughs> yeah. So these are the things that they really, that you are really being asked to look at. Everything that feels comfortable and programmed. This is just what I do. You're, you, you need to start to ask yourself, is this what I want to do? Is this how I want to be? So you you're there, you you are literally like pulling yourself, gripping yourself out of the the programs, 
and the way that you have lived this life for so long. And it's a gift to be able to start doing that because then it allows you to move back into you and what you're here to do. Because what you're here to do, you're going to be working with people. You're going to be helping people. Um, you're, and it's you. See, this is really, really important. You're, you are not. Okay. So here's an example. Let's say somebody hires you at like a nursing home and you're going to be like the entertainment director. You're going to create all the different, like, like the games and everything that they're going to do. Right? I used to host karaoke shows. I oh, used to really? be in the entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was an office manager. I was like administrative office manager for my whole career. And then I quit and I'm like, I'm never working for anybody again. And then I went and hosted karaoke, became oh, a DJ. Oh my God. I love it. Well, there's something fun about your energy, right? And, and creating fun for people and, um, and bringing joy and laughter and that kind of thing. That's, that's in you. That's your signature. So let's just say you get hired for some random job. Okay. What you're going to start to notice yourself experiencing is, and this could be happening in your, in, in before you even are give offered some sort of job is that your innateness, your knowingness, your, your, you is going to want to come out. So you're going to be like, Oh my God, this is what I really want to do right now. It may not make sense. Like you may be like, for, here's an example. You work in a nursing home and you're, this is your job title and you're supposed to do dot, 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 dot. And you're like, yeah, but I feel like at eight o'clock at night on the full moon, I'm supposed to wake all the old people up and bring them outside. That kind of a thing, right? So you're going to be outside of the box. You're going to, you're not going to follow the rules. You're not going to follow the way that it is designed to be. So you, this is just how your signature is. So you're, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to find yourself up against that as you start unraveling and diving deeper into you, you're going to start to become more free. You're going to start to recognize how shackled you've been, right. And how confined you have been for so long. And you'll start to, you're going to start to unravel it, you know, um, um, open up the, what is it when you like, when something's been wrapped, like, like a hose has been coiled, you're going to start to uncoil. Um, and so really two pieces for you, recognizing when you are in programming, i.e. I'm doing the same thing that I always do. I'm doing the same programming. I'm saying the same things. I'm thinking the same things that's programming. So being aware of that and two, starting to follow what you're actually feeling and knowing that that is going to be outside of the box many times, meaning it's not going to make sense to a lot of people, perhaps meaning that people may say, what are you doing? Have you lost your mind? Um, <laughs> meaning it happens that, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's your signature. Right. Meaning it's your, it's who you are. And so who you're here to be for humanity is going to follow that. It's going to hold that. Um, and what's going to, what you'll start to probably recognize is that you're going to want to bring um, laughter, smile, lightheartedness, um, love. These are the things that you're going to want to bring to people. And so whether you have an education or not doesn't matter right I know i've been struggling with trying to decide if i want to stay in school it seems a little different now i'm studying nutrition and i'm like well i have no idea what i'm going to be doing and there's so many things i i know how to do and i'm like i don't i don't, well, know, you know, I don't the, know where it's going to come from the nutrition piece may be uh an opening to a, an, an opportunity and then of course, once you get in, no holds barred, right? You're gonna you're gonna be changing people's lives um, from that opportunity that the education gave you. So that's 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 what 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 I mean when I say the education doesn't matter is what you're going to be doing, it has nothing to do with the education. The education may open doors for you. Got it? But which is what I yeah. yeah. And that, that that's really, how I'm viewing it right now. Yeah. Because once you get into the door, then you're going to take off your your what you're here to do is going to um, uh, radiate out. 
So it, it doesn't really matter. You could be a psychologist, you could be a nurse, you could be, um, you know, anything, and you're still going to do the work you came here to do in that role. So do you have any sense of something specific or other than just bring my sunshine every whatever I decide to do? bring my sunshine and that's what I mean gonna... yeah it doesn't really matter what you do because when you arrive there that's when your purpose shows up does that make sense absolutely yeah it's not going to matter to you you want to choose something that you like doing but right. but once you're in the job then you're going to make you're going to then that's when you're going your signature is going to come online and you're going to serve you could be working at a veterinarian office you could it's it, it's really interesting your signature because it doesn't matter where you are your signature is going to come on wherever you are I'm so definitely really, a bloom where a planted person yeah so just pick something that you like to do and um and then and that is where you're that is where you will find the the highest potential for you you know and if you don't like what you're doing then you'll then you will you will say okay let's move on to the next the next uh the next uh opportunity um but it feels like if i were to tap in and sort of be more more specific or intuitive around it i would definitely say that it has to do with empowering women I would definitely say that it's so really strange. <laughs> That's strange. I mean, yeah. I definitely, the empowerment part I get, I'm always a little, like I'm so, oh God, it's a very unpopular opinion, but I'm a very traditional, like the female and male roles. I'm, you know, I don't mind being me and you be the guy or whatever. So it's never really been, but that's interesting because mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we, we need it. We don't get the help that we need as women. Often we carry so much on our shoulders. I mean, you I get all, it. Yeah. You of all people can probably help a lot of women. <laughs> Reluctantly. <laughs> she's. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, but anyways, it, it, it can be anything, you know, it's, 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 it's it can be anything, but, um, it is an empowerment piece. It is a laughter, joy, peace, love. It's um, it's breaking out of old programs, breaking out of limiting beliefs. It's everything that you're going through right now. A lot of that. So living in my little my little bedroom at my mom. That's having a 16 year old again <laughs> with my parents. It's such a struggle, you know. I'm here taking care of them, and yet they still treat me like a 60 year old. So it's a balance, but you've helped me so much to learn to let the emotions go through me. And that, like, I don't know, you did one, the last thing, one of the last things I saw about a week ago, and everything has changed for me. I even bumped my leg and hurt so bad, and I immediately thought it's just energy let it flow through me and the pain immediately stopped it was so crazy you've just been such an amazing help and the compassion part i can totally relate because it is easy to think that we know more and to put ourselves like look down on people especially the people that you've known and loved for so long and you're like how can they not see this and then you realize well of course i mean one of my best friends she's like you know, I'm, I don't care to go out of my way to do anything extra and evolve. And I'm like, how can you not? You're so smart. You see it and you're choosing to sit on the sidelines, but that's okay for her to do. And I've, I've learned that from you and I've gotten so patient and um, you're just amazing. And I speak for all of us here when I say that you're such a gift in this um, time, especially. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's really interesting what we're being asked to to step into. I mean, who would have thought that like, you know, this is what we'd be practicing so, so often, you know, I mean, we, I mean, and the crazy thing is, is that were we not compassionate three years ago, four years ago, like, wait a second, like, who was I like, wait, it, like, what, how, what the heck, you know, like, dude, I'm totally judgy. I recognize how judgy I am. <laughs> I try to work out. Oh, where am I? She's so not? happy, smiley. She's yeah. Judgy. It's really interesting what we start to look at when we start to um, step out of what we've been in because we realize, man, we've we are just beginning to really to really live who we came here to live 
as. And, um, and all of us, all of us that were on the super chat tonight, all of us that are courageously walking through this, we're all, we're all experiencing very similar things. And we're all going to be finding ourselves in really beautiful places in our lives. It's just that we are currently in quite the, um, the transformative phase where we feel like, you know, we have no grip on any of it. A lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us. And um, there's massive shifting and massive changing, but there's so much that is coming. This is just one of the phases of this process. This is just the beginning. And um, because nobody has ever gone through it and we haven't gone through it, we don't, we don't realize what's coming for us and for humanity. But there is a lot of amazing, powerful, beautiful um, life that we are going to be stepping into. We just have to remember that. We didn't incarnate to wake up and be in hell. That's not why we did this, right? We didn't incarnate and, 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 just, and raise our hand and say, yeah, I'm going to go through this with humanity in order to be in suffering and struggle. We did it so that we could assist humanity and we did it so that we could feel what it would feel like to go through this shift, not to stay in it and be stuck in, in suffering and struggle. No way. That's not why we're here. It's not why we're here. It's like, it's like we're supernatural and we can all have this 100%. We're all superheroes. We just have to step into it. Yeah. And then it's going to be a blast. Like each day I get a little more excited because in my heart, I know I'm, you know, kind of calming down and understanding and feeling my, you know, just learning to love more. It's just opening my heart is the hardest, you know, you just have to stop and open your heart every time you get frustrated, every time you get out, just stop. And and you, you, you've just been so pivotal in that. Cause I was so, when I first got into it and started looking, I'm like, well, you know, and then, it, oh my God, you know, you open your third eye, what the heck kind of demons am I going to find attached to me? And you know, that fear keeps you from wanting to really jump in and just, Hey, let me just see everything that's there. And I, I know in my heart that if you've, it depends on how you're living and you're, what you're feeling and what you're projecting, that's what you're going to experience. You're not going to experience, you know, you know, whoever this guy is that found this demon. It's I'm, I know that if they're not hurting me now, when I can see them, I've already warned them. When I can see you, you better get off me because I'm going to kick you out into another dimension. So if you dare stay on me, when I can see you, I'm going to throw you out of here. And I'm like, I got you. Well, I've been to, I've, I've done many, many guided journeys. I've experienced hundreds of different higher dimensional consciousnesses. I've astral traveled. I've bilocated. I've moved into different ships. I've gone through all these different portals. I've gone through to the, all these different dimensional fields. And I have not once experienced a demon. So it's I'm sure of it. It's not going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's all. Happen. It's That's all scary. about. That's yeah, I mean, you know, lots of people have experienced those dark energies. I've never once experienced anything like that. So you know, it's all. It's all. It's all kind of the way we want to. You know, you're in control. Like they said in the very beginning, you get to choose how you're going to do this, and um, and only you. You're making all the rules. Nobody else is making the rules. And that's really something we need to hold on to. And one last thing before we go about opening the heart. One of the things that's happening to us on a regular basis right now, over and over and over again, is that our hearts are breaking open. Their hearts are breaking and they're breaking open. And so the way that our hearts open is that they have to kind of break open, which means that we have to see suffering. We have to see pain. We have to see what humanity is going through. We, we feel it, right? But what it does is it breaks open our hearts. And when our hearts break open, we can't help but love. We can't help but feel. We can't help but have more compassion and empathy. We can't help but say, oh my God, what can I do? How can I help? Our hearts are breaking open literally every single day. That's one of the greatest gifts of this massive chaotic holy, uh, like, what is this shift is that it is allowing our caged in blocked in tight hearts to literally burst and break open. Right. And so we have to allow ourselves to feel everything. We have to allow ourselves to, to, to watch the pain. We have to allow ourselves to, to feel it because that is where we find ourselves in the most love. That's where we recognize, oh my God, I have so much more love for humanity right now. And that's how we unify. 
that's how we come together. That's how we don't walk outside and say, oh my God, you idiot. Instead, we say, oh my God, I love you. Oh my God, I'm so I'm 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 so I'm so in awe of that human experience that we're all navigating. Oh my God, I I can I can empathize with the fact that you're in pain or that you're in uh, fear, right? We start to, it's not easy, but we, this is what's starting to unravel. This, this is what, this is the train we're on, um, is this heartbreaking open, uh, experience. So for there me you go. being here, being here couldn't have, like at first when I got here, I was just devastated. It, it just devastated me to, to see my parents sicker than I expected them to be, to get here and realize I, was, I can't even get a job because they require my full-time attention between the two of them. My dad's in a wheelchair. My mom's got cancer, lung infections. I mean, it's been so crazy, but it is the perfect place for me to be. This is what I needed with them to be able to open my heart and understand everything I'm going to need from here on out. This is here you go. This is what you're going to need, Irma. You need to find that compassion. Stop being such a crazy bitch and get mad at everybody over everything. Why doesn't every, you know, because I'm so bossy and judgy and I'm like, what is wrong with you? My poor mother's like mental. It's like, well, she can't help it. Can yeah. you just not worry about it? Because she get it's been the perfect place for me to be and understanding that we're right where we need to be at any given time okay. has been like just mind blowing because it's like, Stop complaining. You're right where you need to be. This is the lesson you needed to prepare you for the next level. So it's yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're Love amazing. you, my friend. I'm so glad oh I got my to God, you. Me up. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Me. Thank you. And I'm gonna I'm gonna start empowering women. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Empowering right. anybody. Anyone. Anybody. Doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. I got love enough for all of you. Yes. I know we can feel it. All right. Yay. We love you. Thanks for being with us. We love you. Thank you. Thank Bye, you very Irma. much. Bye. All right. It's time for me to go. This has been a very long super chat. I don't know how I still have all of this energy. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to go. All right. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you on the 29th, Wednesday, the 29th at 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, if you're still hanging in here. Um, and um, in the meantime, be gentle with yourself. Be loving, be compassionate. And um, thank you, everyone that jumped on for the super chat. You guys were amazing. And we learned so much. I love you. See you next time.